All right, we are now recording, I believe. Um, okay, so, so you're gonna do it on a different yeah. machine and then I'm gonna connect it using the key. Um, actually, so what I'm doing right now is I've created an EC2 instance for you to work on the machine learning worker for clustering um, on issue 1199 on Augur. And I'm gonna walk through the steps of setting up the server with you so that when we're finished, <clears throat> you will be able to log into the server and you can log into the server right now. Just don't mirror what I'm doing because I'm I'm actually doing it. Um, okay. I think I should share the screen after, and you can guide me through it. Well, uh, either we're going to do this once because it's a brand new server, so you can guide yourself through it, and we can record that, or I can walk through it, and we can record that. It's kind of your call on which of those we do. So somebody's going to do the walkthrough, and at the end of it, there's going to be a server that's going to be collecting data. <clears throat> I, I, do you want me to walk through it? And then effectively, at the end of the process, if I do it, Anurg, uh, you will have a server that's collecting the data that you require to do the work. Um, <clears throat> so you'll be able to stop and start this instance of Augur, but the end of this will be that the Augur instance is first going to collect all of the data that's required in order for it to run machine learning. Does that make sense? Uh, so that's the so that's like the base data. Um, it's, I'm looking at. I mean, so I I'm, at, I'm I not look, actually getting what I have to do. Like I have to set up you, the instance. On... I'm going to, I'm going to set up the instance for you, but the okay. reason we have um, to, as Meet pointed out, the reason that we have to run the instance before you can do the machine learning work is because, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can see like in this database of uh, this auger instance, I've got 1.4 million commit rows. I have. 300,000 pull request files, uh, 25,000 pull requests, 2,000 releases. Um, okay. Most importantly, uh, pull request message refs that have got 35,000 of those. Uh, issue message ref, I've got 36,000 of those. Messages, I've got 62,000. <clears throat> and so that's the raw data that you need in order to do clustering. So in the first run through, we're just going to get the data that you need to then use to do the clustering work on a second run through. Okay. Does that make so you, sense? Okay. So let me get this. So you are going to set up the instance, then I'm going to use the key to connect to that instance. Yep. And yep. Why, don't, why don't you use the key to connect to the instance right now? Make sure you got the ch mod part correct. Okay. I haven't done that. I think I should share my screen and then do it. So I don't okay. it. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So I'll stop I my share. Okay, so <clears throat> just give me two minutes. Yep, no problem. Visible now? Yes, I can see it now. Okay, so let me first put the key in my home directory. Yep. So this is an EC2 key. Okay. Okay, so it's in the Oh, at the, home directory. The, All right. So yeah, you can uh, uh, just okay. uh, ls dash l a r t h. <clears throat> okay. So I have to do the. Well, that will show us dash l a r t h. That'll show us. Um, <clears throat> All right. There okay, it, is. So here it is. So it's basically the command is simply ch mod 400 space 400 um, and then space 1199b.pem. Okay, so and that's I copied and pasted that. Yep, that's exactly correct. Yep, so we hit enter yeah. on that. You're good to go. And then the second command that I shared with you is mm -hmm. the SSH okay. dash I command, correct? So this, yep. Now, if you hit that, we, uh, you should be in the EC2 server, same as me. Yes, okay, wait a minute. yes, yes. Okay, what? Uh, yes, oh, I want you to say yes, not why. Okay. Yes, it really wants yes. you to type out yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Permission, Permission denied public key. Uh, huh? Um, 
do ls dash larph again? <clears throat> I want permission to do it. I wonder if permission is denied because I'm already in it and it's being suspicious of that. Let me um, let me just exit my terminal session um, and try that command again. Maybe two people can't do logging at once. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, I had that right. I think you need to hit enter. Not accessible. Mm. Um, no such file on the tree. Yeah. All right, uh, paste this command. I don't know why I can't see it. We're in this directory. Um, paste it again, and then in front of the 1199B, put dot slash, dot forward slash. <clears throat> this? No, uh, there must be a dot in front of the forward slash. After no, the B? No, 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 no. Right where you were, but put dot and then forward slash. Like okay. a period. Yep, exactly. Let's try this. It, okay. It's not accessible. Um, are you in some virtual environment or something? Yeah, this is, it no, should be. Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm not from the virtual environment. So if you're, like, I'm seeing the file in the directory that you have with the correct permissions. <coughs> and it says it's not accessible, and so I am super confused. Um, Should I do sudo? I don't, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't need to, right. but you get rid of the dot forward slash before you try sudo. Okay, dot forward slash. Um, yeah, you're using a Linux distro I'm not as familiar with. Okay. So, for, so uh, let's try this. Okay. Let's see if that works. <clears throat> okay, so let me hit the box one. Okay. Yes. Formation denied. It's still denied. saying it's not a public key. I mean, it's there. All right. Um, well, that's super irritating. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Permission denied. So it, in this case, it does seem to have found the key. Um, let me make sure I can still get into it. Yeah, I'm able to get into it. So now... Let me just uh, pause the recording again here. All right, so the issue you were, uh, the issue you encountered was I sent you this command um, without putting it in Unix tick marks. And when I, sometimes when you don't put commands in Unix tick marks, quotes use a different UTF-8 code at the command line than you intend. And so that's probably why it wasn't working earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's what happened there. Now you're in. So do you want to uh, do this installation process, or do you? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll do I want it. like <clears throat> I want to the collect the data right first. Yeah. Well, so there's a process I'm going to share. There's okay. the documentation. Um, this is what we need to do. We need to like begin by installing all this stuff. So it's uh, on Ubuntu here, it's going to be sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so first thing we'd have to do is install the things in the documentation I just sent you, which is just the standard Augur documentation site. Where did you send it? Uh, the... uh, oh, I sent it in Zoom, sorry. Zoom, I've, okay. I've been sending you stuff in Slack, but I sent it in Zoom. Okay. And I did that because I believe that perhaps that will be in the recording somewhere. Well, I don't know yep. that. Okay, so this one. <clears throat> Let me just open it. <laughs> you page one installation here? You're talking about? Yeah, Postgres installation. Yeah, basically, the uh, Postgres installation page, we we're going to do the COAPT upgrade, update, upgrade, okay. and then we're going to install some software. I have done this. Not on this computer, you haven't. 
Okay. This computer is brand new. You, you just logged, you just SSH okay, okay, into okay. an Amazon EC2 instance. There is, uh, if you type PS space dash EF, you'll see that there is almost nothing running here. Okay, so I have to do this again. Yep. Okay, so let me just yeah, because this is not your computer. This is a computer in the EU. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> All right, and then up the same thing. Upgrade, yeah. Yes. This, you know, if the if the image that uh, Amazon uses is reasonably up to date, which typically is, this shouldn't be a long process. Um, Xbox, uh, click the spacebar. All right. <clears throat> okay, so now the software properties come. Up. Uh, I'm not sure that worked. Try the upgrade again. Sue IPT upgrade. Yeah, I'm not. All right, it did work. Okay. All right, yeah, let's go to the next step then. Awesome. This one. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. It's already there. So, uh, I can dev a moment. Yep. Okay. <laughs> You're probably also going to find that this has pretty good internet um, compared to your. Regular instance, and then we're going to be with Postgres, yeah. <clears throat> now the web essentials. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, just give me one. No, so no. Second. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Then, yeah. PSQL. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then I have to create the database. Then a new user with the password. Correct. Okay. Pointing on. Okay. So now Git configuration also have to do. Um. Yes, that's helpful. Oh, you have to get out. This backslash Q <laughs> is how you exit a Postgres shell. Um, and then you have to exit the Postgres user, ex exit, exit okay. yeah, and then you're back to root, you have to exit again, and then you're back to your mortal user, okay. I believe, is where you need to be for the next step. And if I'm wrong about that, then go back into root. The git configuration now. Yep, yep, this is exactly where you want to be. Yeah, you should be able to copy and paste that entire block at once. Oh, and the, okay. these these um, parameters exist so that when the worker that comes commits scans, it is able to uh, go as far as it needs to go. Um, so if you have a very deep tree in your repository, this ensures that it works. When, for example, somebody does a, a major refactoring and every file in the repository moves what's effectively happening is in a single process it's renaming all of the files and when you do a git pull you need to have you need to have rename set to true and you need to set the rename limit very high in case for the un i guess common enough that we need to do this but not something that you'll encounter every time you run auger um, but anytime somebody who's you're using an auger repository that you've installed um, changes everything, refactors the whole repo, <clears throat> then you will need this. That's go installation. Need. Now I have to do the yeah. go installation also. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure I have the best instructions in there for that. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. This is good instructions. All right, yeah. so you can just do this snap install. 
Okay, so let's do this. Google Classic. Mm -hmm. I will run real quick at the latest version of Go. Great mm -hmm. thing that breaks it. <clears throat> and then I have to also make a virtual environment. Um, yes, that is correct. So what I do, you can follow whatever practice you're accustomed to in the user that you're in right now. I usually create a GitHub directory and then under that GitHub directory, I'll create a BENV directory and I'll do my Git clone of Augur inside the GitHub directory. And then I'll have like two, two subdirectories under GitHub, BENV and the Augur clone. It's entirely up to you what strategy that you use or where you put your virtual environments. Got virtual EMVs in the home directory is common as well. Um, the, the critical thing is just, of course, okay. that you put it in a place where you'll remember that it's there and you won't okay. come back to this computer and be like, where is that? So I should make a GitHub mm. directory. Yep. That's, that's what I do. Yeah, that's my thinking. So inside this directory, uh, directory I should uh, clone the repository and also make the environment. Correct. Okay, so let me do this. MKD, yeah. Then. Okay, so I should clone the repo here. Yep. Uh, and also, like every time I work, uh, I get off work, I have, should, uh, you know, remove the, I uh, should exit the instance. Um, no, no instance needs to be left running. Okay, so uh, I mean, um, like... and actually, let's let's stop a minute here. Um, I'm gonna have you update your fork of Augur because I just did a merge into Dub that you won't have. So, what's critical here is making sure that your virtual environment is where you you will remember that it exists. <clears throat> so the Dabber, is, yeah, this is fine, right? Yes, I'm not, I'm only seeing your web browser. But that <clears throat> that command should work fine. So should I first exit the Augur directory or should I make it inside the Augur? Um, I would I would I would go back up to the GitHub directory. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I should create it here. All right. And again, um, we're only seeing your web browser right now. So. Acha. Okay. Okay. I. Let me that's, let me that's, which is fine. I just uh, I want if you think that we're seeing yes. what we're seeing. <clears throat> is it visible? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm, that's, yeah. That's what you had. That should work if you created the VNB okay. subdirectory. So yeah, let's try it. Okay. Um, I have oh, to first uh, make uh, it. No, first I, make I, the... actually uh, do an ls dash l. I actually think the issue is. Oh uh, yeah, you first have to make the directory, but then also, yeah, go ahead. The command dash m space no, oh yeah. So now you do Python three dash m, and then you just get rid of everything except for the there. No, 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 leave that. Yeah. So the dash m v e n b is actually calling the Python module v e n b to create the virtual environment. And now it's going to do that inside this directory. So go ahead and yeah. hit enter. Actually, I've worked mm -hmm. with virtual environments a lot. Okay. <laughs> I so do a lot of personal projects, so I yeah. use a lot of virtual environments. Yeah, so you should be able to source this now. Okay, so let's just... So activate it. Okay, so let's pass it to Ogre. Okay. Okay, then source this. All right. Yours, what should we do? It will be VBM. Will it activate from here? No, I think I have to go revert from the base. Yeah, I mean, you have to be you inside the GitHub. You can activate it from anywhere as long as you provide the path. So from here, you would be doing source space VNV forward slash the name of the auger underscore or you could probably just hit tab and slash bin slash activate. Yep. 
Yep. There we go. Okay, nice. Yep. Now, <clears throat> now you're ready to do your make and install it. Did we create the database user already? I think we did, uh, didn't we? Okay, yeah, we not... did. Yeah, we did. <clears throat> so now you can, um, there's, you should be able this... to make install. And, uh, oh, this right. uh, just put in make install. Uh, actually, yeah, put in wheel. It go a little faster if you. What are you saying? Uh, this command that you have here, that's helpful. Okay. As small solution benefit. As an, all right, just ignore it. Just do make space install. This will what? work. Okay, make install, right? Yep. Yep. So now, <clears throat> this, how long this takes really is a linear Fun. It's a, it takes it the uh, speed is linear with your internet connection speed. So here we're on an EC2 server and it's going really fast. If you have a severely bandwidth limited internet connection, I don't know what you would consider severely bandwidth limited, but let's say 30 meg megs uh, a second or less, um, it's going to take a lot longer than this. It depends on my current internet speed now. I think well, I'm getting... uh, it, well, here you're fine because you are logged into a computer that is in Amazon's data center in London. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to go super fast. Okay. <clears throat> but okay. if you're doing this locally, this process, and you've probably experienced this, that this process yes, yes. Takes, takes much time. longer. Um, takes time. But it should go sort of fast. Um, here and this is this is actually the fact that it's building yep that's fine So every time I open my laptop, I have to run that SSH command to connect to it, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's uh, okay, like okay. any server connection. And uh, before closing my PC, should I uh, do something or just close it directly? Um, as long as you start Augur using the no hub in parentheses, as I advise, you shouldn't have to do anything. Like I like after I did the setup and do some work, I just shut it off. No yep. other command. Bingo. Okay. Bingo. So how long are we gonna run this instead? Uh, yeah. Um I'll you know we can leave it run for a month or two. You... Till we resolve the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Um, and if you resolve the issue, maybe we just keep it going and be working on a different issue. It's, okay. uh, you know, using these two instances, it's like possible a little bit So. It's worth it if, uh, if we do work. I mean, like this, <clears throat> this is not a small EC2 instance, but it's. Not as big as some of the computers that we have in our houses. Actually, it is. I mean, it does have a lot more memory than the computer that you have in your house. At least typically. Sean, while this is going on, can you have a look at my PR? Actually, I wanted yeah, to discuss yeah. over that. Yeah, yeah, let's, um, let's do that. So we're going to pause the installation and look at the pull request that Agraw has. I'm going to okay. stop your screen. Um, do you want to stop yeah. screen sharing for a minute? Yep. Okay, I'll do that. So Should I put up the link? No. I, I feel it's fine. Yeah. Okay.
started getting so it was a pull request. <laughs> yeah. Is it this code complexity API? The, the third one. The third one. The third one. The third, third one, okay. That'll be feature add task. Yeah, repository traffic right on. <clears throat> right, let me just make this fit. There we go. Um, okay. Oh, there, the steam migration skips. Oh, okay. Um, no, you should not have to do that, but I'll take a look here. So this is where, um, in order for Augur to be what's called item potent, um, we need, anytime there's an addition of a table, as there is in this case, um, we need there to be an update to the database script. Uh -huh. um, All right, I just have to look at, so here now I have to look at my existing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the versions, sorry. All right. Okay, so. We have to make this four underscore. Yeah, that's what I discussed. <clears throat> yeah. Because. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a small. And, and it's right. it's well the the I guess the the trick is actually we could make it. I mean, let's see. This is being merged into main right now, and then we could make the I could make the changes afterwards. Um, because main still the main branch still only has two, I believe. I don't right, believe I guess. Yes, I, uh, uh, the dev branch has three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I can merge this into main, and it'll work. Um, so I'm just looking at uh, repo clone. So you added that to a net auger data. Have we shifted to Rabbit MQ recently? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, we're using RabbitMQ now. There's yeah, uh, yeah. so that's uh, but not on the main branch yet. So I haven't. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a Google Doc we're using for that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going through that draft PR that we have uh, enabling RabbitMQ. So yeah. All right. So probably. There's enough moving parts in this PR. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a YOLO moment, whether I decide to create a new branch. Oh, and you're going into Chaos Augur new. Well, yeah. Um, that branch actually is a little wonky, but um, perhaps safer. Yeah, let me take this through for a minute. Um, so Augur new isn't that's uh that branch has sort of been abandoned now that we've gone into we released it effectively. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And so I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this. And I think the best way to do it is for me to go back here and then do a test dash traffic branch based on main. And then, <clears throat> so basically I'm doing this because there, we've added a table, we've changed the alignment scripts, 
I want to make sure it right. runs before I merge it with the main branch. Oh, that is um, yeah. And so I'm going to edit the pull request so that it goes, instead of going into Augur New, it goes into test traffic. And this will have some slightly different. Uh, yeah, a few other comments as well, but a long one. Yeah. So, all right. Mm -hmm. So this is fine. Um, and there's no risk now because I've created a separate commit branch. All right. So now test traffic exists and Uh, yeah, Nima, just uh, uh, do we allow push permissions as well when we are making up the token? Generally uh, for Augur token? No, no, you don't need push permissions at all. You just need read okay, permissions. Yeah. Like every, you don't need, you don't need anything that's admin or write um, or delete. You only need like all of the read permissions. Okay. Okay. Um, I see that Grimoire Lab as well wants a similar feature. They have what? To their issues. Like, uh, I guess Grimoire Lab as well, like, has an issue for this particular feature to collect uh, the traffic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'd be, I'm sure they would welcome you contributing to that as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. All right, is there, and then let's see if I do um, the call, get stash, yeah. Let's just pull the whole bunch of stuff. Test traffic, that's what I wanted. Oh, we're going to make rebuild, which should be interesting because this re this instance was actually running with um, MQ previously. So we had to jump to MQ for uh, RabbitMQ we're using for large scale data collection. <laughs> um, like when you get above about 15,000 repos, Redis doesn't actually have the oomph that we need to manage that much work. So, uh, okay, so now what we're going to do, I've rebuilt it. Um, just going to make sure I've killed all the existing processes. Wrap page three. All right, and so. Yeah, uh, actually, Sean, I wanted to ask this one question specifically, like, uh, you know, when we are testing a particular worker, is it possible to test a single worker or do we have to, again, rebuild everything? Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, we've been rebuilding everything. It seems to yeah. there are, if you look in the tests subdirectory on Augur, you can see uh -huh. that we've written tests that will test each worker. Yeah, yeah, I do see. So that where that therein may lie um, the clue to how you might test an individual worker. Oh, okay. 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 Because uh, I haven't actually, you know, obviously, I have not. I'm, I have not run it. Now I'm just tailing the output of your instance to make sure it starts well. Um, yep, yeah, and it's going through everything. So I'll just let this run. And if it works, then I'll do a pull request in the de in the dev main, probably dev. Um, so that's part of the next release. Okay. But um, first, I'll make sure that everything runs this way, 
and then I'll make sure that it runs in dev. Um, um, just just let me know if you know anything breaks down. Absolutely, like... yeah, absolutely, yeah. I've uh, I've merged, I've closed and merged the pull request. It just hasn't yet hit the main branch, so okay. you won't quote unquote get GitHub credit for it yet um, because it hasn't been merged into the main branch, but it will be. Um, I'm testing it on a copy of the main branch to make sure it works. And if that works, then there's no problems. I'll just merge it into the main branch. And then we'll test it and do a release of Augur. And then we'll test it. Um, we'll test it. Um, yeah, in dev as well. <clears throat> so then I'll do, I'll create another pull request where I change the name of your Olympic script to four underscore. Or change yeah. the or change the dev one. Uh, okay. One way or the other, something obviously will have to change. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, is is that good then, me? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, by the time we're done here this morning in a couple hours, I should know if. Uh, well, maybe I won't actually buy. Um, maybe I just actually stupidly started it on a pretty large set. It would probably be smarter if I tested it against a something with less than 7,000 repos in it. So I'll do that too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, is, is the use of rabbit MQ really affecting the current code or the configuration that we had for it's a uh, it's going to be a very small change actually in yeah. the there'll be a two pack a system level package manager um things that have to be installed one is erlang which for oh. whatever for whatever reason rabbitmq doesn't install it automatically as something that rabbitmq requires but if you run rabbitmq without first installing erlang at the operating system level RabbitMQ doesn't work. <laughs> um, and it's in the documentation, but what's ambiguous to me is why RabbitMQ hasn't made it part of their own pseudo APT install to go get Erlang since it won't really work without it. Um, I, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I'm sure there's a reason, like maybe it's a package used by other packages that the version has to be managed with is the most likely explanation that makes sense to me. There could also be a stupid explanation, but <laughs> um, so and and then there's one line that you have to add. There's a there's a script there's a script that I will we will provide for creating a, a specific MQ for each instance uh -huh. that you run. Right. Um, but that's we have we have a README that we're editing for that, um, and we'll update the installation instructions. So yeah, there's a big. It's going to be a major documentation update when we right. go here. Um, I guess like if you need help with writing down documentation to add tasks, I can, you know, help with that because I've just added that traffic task. I exactly know like, you know, what changes are to be made and where the additions are to be made. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if some help is needed on, around that, I can um, probably do uh, that right. specific. Okay, that's awesome. Appreciate that. All right, how are things uh, going on your end? Do we have some specific time when we do this uh, release, or is it like whenever we have some stable update, yeah, we make a release? Yeah, basically, when I have a stable update, like I try to run, I try to test everything. <laughs> I mean, I run a so we'll run all of our tests, and when they pass, then I'll do a, what I call a field test, where I'll run okay. Augur on three different got sizes of repository. Um, and that takes a couple of days just to make sure that there aren't any issues that emerge at scale that are not present when I'm doing what I would like 200 repositories, I would consider like a toy instance, but it's like for machine, for machine learning workers, you need about 200 in order to have enough data to get anything useful with your, in the context of the results. Um, but for, you know, for what Augur is built for, that's still very tiny. Um, 
and I do a like a fifteen thousand, uh, eight thousand, four thousand. Those are those are some of the bigger collections. Those are the three biggest collections um, mm -hmm. I've done. And then there's like you know many instances that have like a thousand repos. Uh, is it like the the dev branch that we have now? Is it like being maintained as the Augur new previously? Mm -hmm. Is that the place now? Yeah, dev branch is the new Augur new. Do I have do I have uh, do I, do I have it stated somewhere that you should use the Augur new direct? No, uh, no, that's what, that's what. Yeah, you, have, you haven't said it actually. So, okay. yeah. so earlier we discussed that uh, before yeah. the release of Augur new. So, yeah. so that's why I based my branch problem. Okay. Yeah, when you started on it, it was that was probably the right branch and time passed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Anurag, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, how okay. is the installation going? Okay, the setup is complete. I provided all the credentials for the database all right. and all. It's probably best okay. that we didn't record that anyway. So good. <laughs> okay, um, so let me share. Um, can we can I ask if we can take like a five minute break? Uh, okay, it's fine. Yeah. For my end. Is that okay with you and me? Yeah, and then, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I hit enter again. Yeah, you just hit the enter twice. And then uh, do a tail no hub dot out. Tail no hub dot out. Hub, hub, hub. H-U-P. Yeah. Okay. No hub dot out. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, all right. So we had a problem. Let's, uh, let's do a cat space no hub dot out. All right. This, that's too big for me to run through the process. Wait, wait. Let me um, just. Let's see. Mother, uh, let's see. Get her. Uh, let's go to the top here. Um, let's do a make, let's, uh, let's do, do make space rebuild. Yeah. So uh, I haven't seen this error before. And so my first instinct is just to try to do a rebuild. Couldn't we make clean first? No, it actually make rebuild doesn't make clean first. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. So let's try it again. Tail no. No, let's try to start. Well, let's do a. Let me just check to see it. Uh, PS. Uh, It looks like Augur died, yeah. There's no, um, Augur isn't running. Yeah, so that, 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 so let's try the no hub dot out running it again. Having no. done the rebuild, the, the command with the no, the last command that you actually need to do both of them. You need to start the flower dashboard and the no hub dot out one. On um, this one? Yep. And then, Yep. Then this this one. Yep. Yep. And enter again, and then do a tail dash tail space dash f. Tail space space dot dash f. Dash f. Yep. Space no hop down out. Oh. Wait wait wait. Type no hop down out. We haven't told it was a tail yet, so it's tail dash f. Yep. No hub dot out. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm probably just cat it because it's either working or it's not. All right, so we have the same error. 
Um, which is uh, okay. All right. This has actually happened before in the world, I see. So there is some kind of binary. This, so the reason that Augur, so we say in our documentation, but now Ubuntu 22 includes Python 3.10 um, by default. The issue with Python 3.10 is that the machine learning libraries are not all updated yet. So you actually have to deactivate the virtual environment that you're using. Okay, deactivate. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I have to reinstall Python with a uh, lower version, right? No, you don't, don't do anything. Okay, you haven't. Okay, you are doing it uh, at yep, your end. Yep, hold on one second. I just have to find the right command to install Python 3.9. All right, so now So, yeah.
Um, yeah, Python 3.9 installed and I'm having trouble creating a virtual environment. Sorry. Uh, putting some weird errors here. Meeting yeah, other system is doing a weird error that I have not seen before. I'm just going to share with you. So the error that I'm getting is uh, I'm trying to create the virtual environment. I installed Python 3.9. Um, and it should work, but. Uh, I can install, but it's it's saying when I try to install when I try to create a virtual environment, it's telling me that I it, it's not working. Have you created the VENV? No, I'm trying to create that's it's a, I'm actually trying to create the VENV. Um, it's giving me an error and it's not letting me install pip. It's um, so. I have to figure out what kind of novel hell this is. I've done this before. So there must be something. that. No, I don't want Anaconda. So I did all that. I don't want the Anaconda advice. Why do they let people post Anaconda advice in Python forms? So, okay. All right. Sean, I'll, I'll just yeah. leave the meeting. All the right, that sounds meeting. good. So, thanks a lot for helping me with that VR. Yeah, no nice problem. Talking to you. Nice talking to you. By, by me, we'll meet again. <laughs> yeah, surely. Bye.
बाय So it looks like I did a bad thing. It's not letting you install pip again. Well, it looks like actually the, the mistake I made is a uh, the mistake I made is I Okay, so I removed the bad version of Python. So now This is actually the one that's going to be used, Dead Snakes. So this is the one that's actually on. They're both they're all telling me dead things. We have this other bug. So this appears to be the right thing to do. Since the issue was that I was using the wrong Ubuntu package distribution library.
Oh, this is a terrible, horrible nightmare. This a million times. This is the problem. Now they're telling me to do this dead snakes one, but another one said don't do it. I did that all and it didn't work. I mean, you uh, could also manually install Python, right? Oh, that's what I've done. And it's like, people are telling me not to use this dead snakes. And then <laughs> people are telling me to use it. So the internet's not consistent at all. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and use it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Pseudo P, pseudo P, pseudo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's on three dot nine dash M and shift K. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, wow. Uh, installing without ensure pip. Oh, this is so annoying. So annoying. I mean, you can use the get pip.py script also, Python. Sorry, Don't even try this. You know, you can download this uh, script from get pip.py script. I've shared the link, and then you can run that script. It also downloads pip. Uh, zoom. Check the zoom. Okay. 
think about the Just run it Python and the script name. Yeah. Okay. Copy it. Know all that junk is. Right. Oh, I guess it is right. No idea that looks really scary to me. But... Yeah, the hell, come on. That script just scares me. Why is this? Started to install them. All right, maybe it wasn't. Okay. I don't. Do I do this up there? Yes, I've done this before.
You are on Mac, right? Yeah, it's my native. But I, I use Ubuntu all the time. Like I've done this on Ubuntu many, many times. I don't know why it is. How are you using Ubuntu on Mac? You're using virtual environment, virtual box. No, I have uh, many computers. Um, okay. I just have one. I have just dual booted it. One for Windows gaming and Pop OS for development. This is most annoying problem to have. This is, I think, the better way to Recommend called Boost Utilities. All right. Well, I got I am. I'm stuck here, so um, I'll leave this open and come back to it and let you know. Okay. Just, oh, okay. I am stuck. I, it's like my brain is just like I am wound into this problem, and I have no idea why it's a problem. I've never seen this issue before, so I just need to step back from it because I have no idea what's going on. Okay, and it's all right. It do be like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I'll let you know when I come back to it, probably tomorrow, and, and fix it. 
Okay, so you're gonna fix it on your end, right? Yeah, I'm gonna fix it and then I'll let you know when it, and I'll start auger and I'll let you know when it's running and where to get the flower stuff at. Okay. Yeah, so I just, yeah. What should I do next? Um wait, I guess right now you just have to wait to hear from me. Okay. Because you don't have any data yet. Okay. So, Sorry. Okay, so we're gonna have another meet? Um, yeah, I think um yeah, there'll be another auger time coming up. Let me get this Python issue fixed and then set up a time in Slack, okay? Okay. Just just notify me, okay. I'll be there. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Anarud. Yes. I'll Sorry. just I'll just mess around Jensen for right now. It's a good uh, idea. Yeah. Sorry okay. I didn't, we didn't quite get there today. I just I know when no, I'm no I know when I'm thrashing and stuck and I just need to walk away from it for a few hours. No, it was a very productive session, you know. Yeah, good. good. Okay. All right. I'll talk with you. I'll talk with you soon. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.